Welcome to Home Economics class. I'm your teacher, Luna. Whatever gender you are, aren't, or for any age under the sun, it's important to know how to take care of where you live affordably and sustainably. Today, we are learning how to make a practically all-purpose, food-safe DIY cleaner. Now, I originally started this project because I had seen the reoccurring instructions for a DIY vinegar-based cleaner being to simply take a few orange peels, place them in a jar with white vinegar for 10 to 14 days, and voila! Great smelling cleaner. However, I found that to not be true for multiple reasons. Mainly, I am someone who hates the smell of vinegar because longer exposure to its fumes can literally make me nauseous. So after I gave the popular recipe a try and it failed, I assumed this was just another internet hoax tutorial. That it would never work, but had been circulated enough that everyone had just believed it without trying it, and then would repin, reshare, and repost, and thus perpetuate the myth. However, vinegar brines are an actual thing, and when soaked, vinegar will take on the scent of the herbs or organic material. White vinegar is a natural cleaner, and I did need something that was food safe as well as child safe. So in February, I decided to do some experiments designed to answer the questions. At what point does the vinegar smell disappear, and at what ratio of peels to vinegar? So I set up a series of jars at decreasing portions of citrus peels and ranging in soaking duration at two week intervals, starting at two weeks up to eight weeks. Because this was approaching early spring in Florida, that meant it was mandarina season. So I peeled up a plate of mandarinas as an afternoon treat for my husband and I, and I began the jarring process. But then, partially through the experiment, I discovered a new issue. Most tutorials showed them soaking the solution in recycled food jars, or in the generic 12 pack of canning jars that you can get at retail stores. In other words, metal lid canning jars. However, vinegar corrodes metal. I had originally assumed that since people kept making blog posts and TikToks showing glass jars with metal lids, that the suggested soaking time was not long enough to significantly corrode the metal. I was wrong on that presumption. <laughs> Moreover, I discovered during my initial round of testing that although the corrosion is most notable after the four week mark, with rust seeping into the vinegar solution to the point of darkening its color, even before the rust damage is visible, it still affects the scent of the solution. The corroded metal in the solution carried a bad scent, quite similar to vinegar in its strong acidic odor, so that someone might think that they just hadn't soaked the solution long enough. However, after doing a comparison test, I confirmed that the scent of white vinegar from not soaking it long enough and the solution with the rust is indeed different. So I did my timeline testing with a glass mason jar with a glass lid and a silicone seal. Through this, I determined that a jar half full in volume of organic matter soaked for eight weeks will completely eliminate any vinegar odor. Now, if this seems like a long time, then I will specify that this timeline is a general rule for all citrus peels. During my timeline test, I discovered that orange peel solutions can be finished as early as six weeks. However, I wanted to see if this timeline was universal. And so I did a lime peel and mint leaf solution, which was not ready until eight weeks. Therefore, I am recommending this as a sweet spot. If you want to make your own uniquely scented cleaner, taking the least amount of soap time to make, I would recommend doing your own timeline experiments as a fun little food science project. Okay, so we had a stable formula, jar half full of peels, fill to the top the rest of the way with white distilled vinegar, two full moon cycles, glass jar, glass lid, plastic seal. But did we only have to use this one type of jar? Was it at all possible to use recycled glass jars with metal lids? Using the previously mentioned mason jar formula as our control group, I decided to do another round of tests to answer those questions. Looking through comments online, I discovered I wasn't the only one who discovered this metal corrosion problem. The common solution to this posited online was to place a double layer of parchment paper as a protection on the metal lid. So I followed this and it didn't work. This recycled Smucker's jar lid had a clear rust ring upon opening, but even before then, I could see the dark discoloration sitting at the top of this jar solution, letting me know that this experiment had failed. Next, I tried my own idea. I hypothesized that the parchment had gotten wet, clung to the lid, and thereby exposed it to vinegar to be slowly corroded. What if, instead, I placed a double layer of plastic from a recycled grocery bag? This being plastic and not paper, the liquid shouldn't be able to pass through even if the first layer got wet. I inspected the bag for holes and sealed the jar with this at the top, trimming off the excess plastic for long-term shelf storage. 
For consistency in the experiments, I used another recycled Smucker's jar for this test. Then, after six weeks, it was time to open. The moment of truth. My last attempt at seeing if I can use my recycled jars to make my household cleaner. And it also failed. The lid still had a ring of damp rust. And even though the plastic layers prevented this rust from falling into the solution and causing the visible dark discoloration we saw in previous experiments, it still affected the scent of the solution. The rust was fainter than last time, which meant that the plastic layer did a better job than the parchment, but it still ultimately failed. So, in conclusion, when making this DIY citrus cleaner, use a jar without metal. On the bright side, I do really love the scent of this cleaner and how effective it is. And I love how after all this, I can feel confident making it every time. I do use it to clean around food and in my pantry. It also gives a lovely shine in the bathroom on my metal faucet. The difference is I'm wiping immediately after spraying. And on that note, I do want to advise that I do call this a practically all-purpose cleaner in this video because just like it can corrode metal with long exposure, it can damage other natural porous materials over time, such as, and most notably, granite countertops. Please remember to do your own cursory research before using this cleaner in your home. All right, I hope this video was helpful and informative. If you have any questions or anything you'd like me to clarify, please feel free to leave it in the comments. If you decide to do this experiment yourself, I'd love to hear about it. Also, just a little PSA, do not mix vinegar and bleach as that creates chlorine gas. If you have any requests for other lessons or videos you'd like to see from me, feel free to leave that in the comments too. Lastly, for the 2021 holiday season, I will be changing my usual video upload schedule to only once every full moon. So I hope you'll be here next time for the harvest moon on September 20th. Bye!